Shavuot Tov Rabotai, we begin today a new Mesechet in the Mishnah Yomi, Mishnayot Mesechet Bikurim, as an introduction to today's Mishnah, which will be Leil Mishmat, Neria ben Sedlana Aranbay, Ben Eliyahu ben Burcha Yisrael, Ben Nuchatam Begane, Den Amen. The Torah commands an owner of land in Eretz Yisrael to designate the first fruits that emerge each year, and then, after they have ripened, bring them to the temple and give them to the Kohanim. These fruits are known as Bikurim, which mean ripening ones, based on the Pasuk brought down in Sefer Shemot, chapter 23, Pasuk 19, and chapter 34, Pasuk 26. Rishit Bikurei Admatecha Tavi Bet Hashem Eloecha. The first of the ripening fruits of your land you shall bring to the house of Hashem your God. At the Bet Mikdash at the temple, he recites a biblical passage found in Sefer Dvarim, chapter 26, Pasuk 3 and Pasukim 5 to 10, in which he thanks Hashem for having given him the land he owns in Eretz Yisrael and the produce that grows there. He then sets down the Bikrim near, near the altar, near the Mizbeach, and they are distributed to the um, Kohanim serving in the Bet Mikdash to be eaten by them and their families. As we will see, the laws of Bikurim apply only to the seven species for which Eretz Yisrael was, is praised, which is wheat, barley, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, and dates. The Torah also requires that the Bikurim fruits be of superior quality. We'll see that in chapter 1, Mishnah 3. One who owns such fruits as well as the land on which they grow is obligated to observe the laws of Bikurim, like we will see now in chapter 1, Mishnah 1. Let us begin. Before, again, Rabotai, if you want more of a general introduction, I advise looking at the art scroll, Mishnayot, elucidated. They bring down several different um, categories of the introduction, different parts of the introduction. Now, when the owner of the land in Eretz Yisrael, when the, when the owner of land in Eretz Yisrael sees the fruits of his land begin to ripen, he designates some as Bikurim, after they ripen and are harvested, he brings them to the Bet Mikdash, gives them to the Kohanim. In the Bet Mikdash, he recites a passage in the Torah in which he praises and thanks God for having given him the, given him the land in Eretz Yisrael. The obligation to bring Bikurim and the obligation to recite the passage are two separate mitzvot. This chapter is going to list cases in which a person is obligated to do both mitzvot or only the mitzvah bring a Bikurim or neither of the mitzvot. Yesh mivin Bikurim Bikurim. There are those who bring Bikurim and recite the passage. Mivin Vilokurim. There are those who bring Bikurim but do not recite the passage. Vyesh and Mivin. And there are those who do not even bring Bikurim. And the Mishnana will illustrate this last category. Now, Mifarshim point out, after making a list, it's not unusual for a Mishnah to begin its explanation with the last item on the list, since that's the one that we had just mentioned. So the Mishnah's first and second categories are discussed later in the chapter. Now we're going to discuss those who do not even bring Bikurim. Elu Nevi'in. These people do not even bring Bikurim. Someone who plants a tree in his own land and bends a branch from it into pr the private property of another person, or into public property, so that the branch grows into a new tree over there, which bending a branch refers to a procedure in which one digs a hole near a tree, bends a branch from the tree into the hole, covers the middle of the branch with earth, and makes the end of the branch stick out from the ground. Now over time, the protruding end takes root, grows into a new tree, and produces fruit. The Mishnah is referring to a case where someone had the tip emerge in land that did not belong to him. Similarly, someone who bends a branch from a tree planted in the private property of another person, or public property into his own land, where the branch grows into a new tree. In this case, he took a branch from a tree that was standing on the property of another, and bent it so its tip emerged from his own land. In both the cases, the Mephoshim explain, he cannot designate the fruit of either tree as Bikuim, because both trees draw nourishment from the land that is not his, and the law is that one cannot bring Bikuim except from the fruit of trees that grow entirely in one's own land. Now, the old tree, the Mephoshim explained, draws nourishment not only from the land in which it stands, but also from the place of the new tree, since it's connected to the new tree by means of the buried branch. 
And likewise, the new tree is also nourished by land occupied by the old tree. The owner, therefore, cannot bring Bikurim from the fruit of either tree, since both receive at least some nourishment from land that is not his. Now, in order, we just said, in order for a person's fruit to be eligible as Bikurim, they must grow entirely from land that belongs to him. This is the biblical law, which source will be cited in the next Mishnah. Hanotel, Mishnah continues. Hanotel etoch shelo bevrich etoch shelo. If someone plants a tree in his own land and bends a branch from it into another part of his land, but there is a public path or a public road in the middle, in the middle, meaning the branch passes beneath a public path or road and it grows into a tree in his land on the other side. Now, let me point out when in this Mishnah, refers to a public path that is relatively narrow, which only a few people can pass at a time. The Chabim is a wide road that can be used by many people. But in any event, the Mishnah says, He does not bring Bikurim from the fruit of either tree, because although both trees are in his property, he cannot designate their fruit as Bikurim, because the trees draw some nourishment from the earth under the path, uh, the public path or road, which does not belong to him. Rabbi Yudah Amel Kazem Mevi but Rabbi Yudah disagrees. He says in a situation like this, he can bring Bikurim from the fruit of either tree because according to Rabbi Yudah, anyone has permission to dig a hole or tunnel under public property as long as it will not cause uh, harm or inconvenience to the public. And the Mephoshim explain, it is permitted to dig a tunnel under a public road provided that the surface of the road is not weakened but remains strong enough to support heavy traffic. That's also the opinion of the Tana, Rebid Yezer in Masechet Baba Batra, chapter 3, Mishnah 8. Therefore, in our case, according to Rabbi Yuda, the owner was allowed to pass the branch through the earth under the public road, which means that his trees are drawing nourishment from the ground in a permitted way, and that suffices to make the fruits of the tree fit to be Bikurim. Now, both trees stand in the owner's land and they draw only a small amount of nourishment from the earth under the public road. So in this circumstance, even though he does not actually own that earth, but merely has permission to use it, the fruits of both trees are fit to be Bikurim. Now, from the fact that, Mifashim explained, from the fact that it says, Mevi, he brings, as opposed to he, um, he brings and recites, Rabbi Yudah is implying that although this person brings Bikurim, he does not recite the passage, the Rav says. Now, although anyone may dig under a public road, he has no right to stop another person from using the hole or tunnel that he dug. Now, this limited ownership is enough for the purpose of bringing Bikurim, but not for reciting the passage, because it includes in Sevot Dvarim, chapter 26, Pasuk 10, Ha'adama shanatateli, the land that you have given me, and this land is not his. Anyone has a right to uh, dig under a public road. Anyone has, a, anyone has a right to use that hole or tunnel that the person dug. The Tanakama, on the other hand, he rules that the owner does not even bring Bikuin because in his opinion, it's always prohibited to use the ground under public property, which is the opinion of the first Tana in Babatra that we quoted, chapter 8, Mishnah 3. Chapter, sorry, chapter 3, Mishnah 8. Now, Therefore, if someone passed a branch under a public road, the trees on both sides draw some nourishment from land that he is forbidden to use, which disqualifies their fruits from being Bikurim. The Rav tells us, Ven Rebi Yuda, the Lecha does not follow Rebi Yuda. Mishnah is Rabotad, Mishnah Aleph. Mishnah Bet now cites the Psukim for the laws that we just taught. Me'ezet tam eno mevi. Why does one not bring Bikurim from produce that draws some of its nourishment from another person's land? Mishum Shenema, because the Pasuk says in Sevot Shemot, chapter 23, Pasuk 19, and chapter 34, Pasuk 26, Rishit Bikurim Ad Matecha, the earliest of the first fruits of your land. Ad Shiu Kola Gidunin Mad Matecha. By specifying your land, the Pasuk implies that you cannot bring Bikurim from produce unless all of its growth, meaning nourishment, are from your land. The Mishnah continues, Ha'arisin, sharecroppers, v'hechachorot, tenant farmers, v'sikrikon, a sikrikon, v'gazlan, and a robber, and mevi'in me'oto atam, they do not bring bikurim for the same reason, mishum shenema, because the Pasuk says, reshit bikurat matecha, it is um, the earliest of the first fruits of your land. Since these people do not own the land on which they are working or which they have taken, they cannot bring Bikurim from its produce. And just to give a background, an Aris, a sharecropper, he farms the land of another person and pays the owner a share of the crop as rent. 
a chachol, a tenant farmer, he also farms the land of another person, but he pays the owner a fixed amount of produce each year, regardless of how much land actually produces. The Mishnah's ruling also applies in Boshim. Explain to someone who rents land, a sikrikon is a known murderer who would steal land by threatening to kill the owner. Even though the owner tells the sikrikon to take the land, he does not really intend to give up his ownership because he expects that one day he will recover it in court. Again, these people, the sharecropper, the tenant farmer, the sikrikon, and the robber, they do not bring bikurim because these people do not own the land in which they are working or they have taken. Therefore, they cannot bring bikurim from its produce. That is an abotai of Tariz Mishnayami. Everybody, Shalavi Shabuatov. Baruch Adonai Amen Amen.